She's traveled far and wide and enjoys great recognition abroad. But in her home country, she can barely move about and has to hide away. Kasha Nabagasira is fighting for the rights of gays and lesbians in Uganda. I've gotten beaten so many times. Uh, I can't count how many times I've been beaten. People have come out openly on social media and saying if they get hold of me, they're going to cut off my head, they're going to put tracks on, on my body and all this. So I have to really, really always watch my back. She can barely leave her house. But for her, the threat has a positive side. No one can deny anymore that there are gays and lesbians in Uganda. I live here with my partner and my cousin brother and his partner. So it's a gay house. <laughs> it's probably the only gay house in Kampala? No. Oh, we have so many people who are living together uh, secretly. Uh, some pretend to be best friends and others pretend to be actually married. So yes, we have uh, actually you in the pink village of Uganda. There are said to be half a million gays and lesbians in the country. There are probably more. Her rights organization wants to use Bombastic, Uganda's only LGBT magazine, to educate people. It's aimed mainly at non-gays. And they hold an annual parade as well. This year's in August was the fourth. There's a great deal of help from abroad. Supporters of the movement donate money to the magazine. But back home, they constantly face hostility from the media, just the people they need as advocates. These are the people we live with. These are people who are pelting stones to us. These are the people who are pointing fingers. These are the people who are sexually abusing us, who are beating us. So we need them to report positively so that we, we can minimize these risks. In 2014, the government wanted to pass a law that would put gays and lesbians behind bars for life. After protests by activists and international pressure, it was overturned. Among the people on the streets, ignorance and fear prevail. I reject homosexuality. If a man sleeps with you, you ruin yourself. But if you're poor and gays want to sleep with you, you can earn money. People can choose for themselves. If they don't want to be homosexual, they don't have to be. Kasha Nabagasira's feelings of guilt bother her more than rejection because of her sexuality. Her mother died of a heart attack, many say because she feared for her daughter's safety. I almost lost my life after the loss of my mother. I abused alcohol, I went into depression, and then I said, would she be happy to see me like this? I just woke up one day, put the alcohol down, that medicine they give, put it aside and said, I'm not sick. I'm just being stupid. My mom stood everything, left, right and center. People, people threw words at her for protecting me, for standing with me, and she stood it. Would she be happy to see me today drowning? Picked up my bones and said, back to the fight. And more and more people in the country are following suit, even though they're frightened of newer, harsher laws in the future. I'm really, really hopeful for the movement in Uganda because even when others go, others come on board. So there is hope, there is no doubt. There is hope and the movement is strong, the movement exists and the challenges are there, but we also register some successes that keep us going. The alternative Nobel Prize might give Kasha Nabagasira some protection in the future and strengthen her in her fight for LGBT rights.